emodels.co.uk. Make something awesome. Got it. I'll be with you in a minute. Oh, right. Hi, welcome. Welcome back. This is part two of the um, Hasegawa on um, Zaxxas 135 excavator build. Um, in this episode, we're going to be looking at building the crew cab. That's all the bits over here. Um, yeah, the crew cab, um, if it was a tank, it'd be the fighting compartment, but yeah, this time it's the crew cab. Um, uh, pretty easy, as we saw last time, I cut the uh, the seat off, that was the first bit we built for the whole uh, model. Um, the rest of it, uh, I've cut them all off the sprues, uh, nothing really remarkable about that. Um, just make sure that um, you cut the right bits off and you don't lose any. What I tend to do... Um, as you can see here, I've just cut, as I've cut the parts off the sprues, I've just marked them all with a little cross just to make sure I've got all the right bits. It looks quite complicated on the plan, uh, on the instructions, because there's lots of numbers as well. Uh, and this, these, these numbers here are, are all the paint callouts that correspond uh, to, the, to the list in here. Uh, so it does look a little bit uh, confusing uh, and then the little stars and such uh, they're telling us that there's decals and such to go on and the decals are actually numbered as well so there's lots of numbers um, you really need to take care when you um, uh, cut your things off the sprues and getting the right ones uh, a part that I did uh, I think north worthy of note was this little bit if you can see it it's just this little um, sort of control handle here when you cut it off I thought the little nub on the bottom of it try and keep it in focus the little nub on the bottom of it was actually went to fit in there but it doesn't uh, this I think represents a, a cup holder so that uh, the driver can put his coster or whatever he's got in a little cup holder uh, but this actually if you see on the plan it gives you a little instruction that it actually sits just in the bottom so that confused me for a little while um uh, zoom in let's try on this phone without wobbling no it's not let me zoom in oh there it goes there. so it just just sits sits in the bottom just in there that's all that's just worthy of mention another part was this as well this is part of the door assembly for the uh, left hand side it's part uh, j4 uh, i thought it was all right i cut it off there's a few injection marks just on the back which i didn't think would be of any significance however looking at the plan i'll just drop that bit looking at the um the instructions there are some decals to go down the edge down here so those all those uh, pot marks uh, need to be uh, filled in uh, I just used uh, some squadron putty uh, just to fill them in but any type of uh, filler will do even some sprue glue would do that uh, just fill them in and then I'll leave that probably overnight uh, then file it down just before we get on to spray painting um, that's the next stage we're going to go to um, I've cut everything off make sure I've got all the parts I'll zoom out a little bit Oop, wrong way. make sure I've got all the parts together um, but ticking them off on the uh, instructions and then I can spray all these um, in one go what I'm going to do uh, I'll give them a coat of UMP uh, primer uh, the black one um, and then that'll sort of uh, blend bring all the colors together and then we can go on and paint in the uh, the color call outs as 
as suggested. Right, I'll go over and get on with that, and uh, the next scene we'll uh, we'll get to another bit. All right. Welcome back to the bench. Uh, right, I've, I've changed the mat as well to see things uh, because there's uh, a little bit of black and things going to go on in the in the parts. Uh, it might be a little bit better on a on a grey background. We'll try this anyway. Um, right, since I've um, been away and uh, sprayed the the parts and took a little bit of time off because of Christmas and things like that. Um, what has happened in the next town or a town that I pass through on the way to work uh, there's been a new building site opened up uh, and I've noticed that on that site they're actually using Hitachi excavators uh, not I don't think there's a 135 on there uh, but certainly they're the same type of excavator just a little bit bigger I think the 135 actually refers to the size of it um, and US I still don't know whether that's American or whether it's uh, a UK thing. Uh, however, what I did notice was that the uh, the plant machinery, the Hitachi plant machinery, where it's here in German grey, or given the call out for a, a German grey type colour, I've noticed, or the the, the the plant appears to be black. Uh, whether that's changed um, in the colours from Hitachi or just because they're, they're pretty new looking machines. Um, this plant hire, um, the, the digger owner, uh, has his staff certainly looking after them. Uh, they do look fairly new. Um, there's not a lot of damage or weathering on them, otherwise I've been over and taken lots and lots of photographs. Uh, it seems that the bucket takes most of the weather. Uh, but what I'm going to do, as I've already sprayed this lot in black, um, I think it's one. It's going to be difficult to see any if if we carry on and do weathering. I think it's going to be a little bit more difficult to get washes and things right um, because it's never easy to uh, put washes and streaks and grime onto onto black. So we'll stick with the German grey um, call out. Uh, it looks a little bit better as well. Uh, it does, yeah, it give it the impression that it's a little bit weather faded as well. Um, a little bit of an older machine. So we'll do that. We'll stick to the, uh, the German grey. Uh, this lot has all been sprayed. Um, some of the interior. Um, there's, there's the interior we looked at before. It's all been sprayed black now, ready to go. Um, and also what usually happens is when I come to um, do some uh, spraying, I usually have lots of paint left in the colour cup so I've uh, carried on and sprayed some of the the orange parts as well yes you're right yeah I've sprayed on the sprue but that's not a big deal it's only a primer coat uh, we're just getting everything ready we'll soon snip them off and once it's assembled we can give it all a colour um, what I've done with this why I've spread it black why I've spread the orange parts black is because when I come to put the orange coat on I don't want it to glare uh, I don't want it to, to uh, be bright uh, a bright orange I want it to be a darker orange I think that's gonna make it a little bit easier once again to do some to do some weathering uh, that the orange will will be subtle enough if you want your orange to pop yeah what you could do give it a white undercoat or even a yellow one, a yellow primer. Well, that that if you're doing orange vehicles, yeah, or a yellow primer will make your um, vehicles pop, your paintwork pop. Uh, right. So we'll go on and we'll get these back to the spray bench uh, and get some colour on them. All right. Okay. Here we are. We've done the German grey. Uh, there hasn't been much to see. Um, because it's really been uh, black on black really well German grey on black uh, so it doesn't come out too well on the video but you can and hopefully you can make out that it has changed the colour ever so slightly and we can now go on to the next stage uh, we can start and sort of detail some of the colours in the cab and uh, move on from there alright Let's go get that done. I'll clear up now. Uh, give this a clear.
clean out with uh, some proper airbrush dinners and uh, move on. Right. All right, as you, as you come back to the bench, what we're, what we're doing here is um, the inside of the cab. It says uh, light aircraft grey. Now, I've had a look around my uh, pit. There's a compressor keening. Yeah, there's a compressor kicking in. Um, I had a look around my paint the stock. I can't quite find any uh, light aircraft grey. What I do have, I have um, light grey from MIG. So I'll use that one. Uh, remember it's the colour call outs. Don't have a stick with them. It's your model. Do it. Yeah, I think this will look right anyway. So we'll start with the lighter colours first because I'm trying to be clever here and what I'll do is rather than having a, a clean out of the airbrush for each colour, uh, do the lighter colours first. Uh, if it stays in focus, yeah, I'll do the lighter colours first. And then uh, go on to the darker ones. <clears throat> now, one thing about if you do use MIG, oh, making all this noisy, if you do, do use the MIG paints, um, they're a little bit different to ordinary acrylics. If it, is you need a, a dust coat first, a light dust coat, and then build the layers up. I see a lot of uh, messages and a lot of uh, complaints that MIG paints tend to uh, orange peel. They don't. It's just a different way of using them. Just build it up slowly. Don't blast it all on. See, I've got a little bit too heavy on that one. And it started to uh, orange peel a bit. There's nothing wrong with the moulding. Uh, there's no oil on the moulding. Um, there's no grease from my hands on the on the paint or anything like that. It's just the way that this paint works. You can just let it dry and go over it again, and it'll be all right. So there, there's a little happy accident just to show you how to use. Uh, MIG paints. See this one here, it's looking alright, just a nice dust coat where we can, there's the compressor kicking in again, sorry about this, uh, but yeah that's what we'll do. Anyway I'll turn the sound off uh, a little bit just so that the uh, compressor doesn't keep kicking in and disturbing us and we'll get on and do all the uh, the colour coats on this cab. Yeah. Right, whilst the rest of the um, parts of the cab are drying, um, I thought we'd get on and have a look at the driver's seat. This is it. Uh, I've sprayed it in blue. Um, the colour call outs call for uh, this blue, which is uh, 65 um, and a 30 in the Mr. Hobby colours, which is uh, bright blue and a flat base. Uh, flat base. I don't have either of them. Uh, so I've had a look through my box of paints and the nearest I've come up to was uh, a Prussian blue. Um, I've lightened it up a little bit with a drop of white and it's reasonably the same sort of colour. Maybe a shade or two out. 
but yeah it's, it'll do it's good enough by the time we've done some weathering on this if we keep it in shot uh, by the time I've done some weathering on this I'll um, make it a little bit grubby uh, put a couple of washes on it and nobody's going to know any different and uh, well, that's what we're going to do now um, what I thought we'd do first is um, we'd show this um, excavator as being uh, being around on the sites for a while so it's going to get a little bit worn uh, people jumping in and out uh, the driver sort of um, scuffing the seats and things like that so what I thought we'd do first is try and expose and uh, do a little bit of exposed um, foam on the inside now everybody will know that these type of seats are um, made with that dense uh, yellow foam um, so I've had a look through the box again and another Vallejo colour has turned up sand yellow yep uh, this will do you, you probably know that this sort of paint these this sort of foam um, discolors as it gets um, UV light on it it'll discolor as well and go darker uh, but uh, there's quite a colour uh, for what we need to begin with. You can actually go f as far as uh, putting some colour on this and then turn it into a, 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 an orange type colour. Uh, so what we'll do, we'll just pick up some of these edges. Uh, there we are. Try to keep this in short and do it for you at the same time. Uh, you can see my paint palette as it is yep got loads of these once again got loads of them so if you have regular medication on the soil know somebody these make excellent paint palettes uh, there we go just pick up some of that and looking at where the most of the wear will occur will be on the front edge it would it would come in sort of one continuous split with a few threads just holding together don't be too fussed about it. Uh, what's in the cab? It's not going to be seen that much anyway. So a bit around here. And maybe not so much on the headrest. If you ever seen um, headrests in, in cabs and things like that, it's usually the edges of the seats that take the battering um, because that's where belts and keys keys on belts will take the toll on the on, on the uh, on the fabric just on the edge I wouldn't go in and do anything on the inside of the seat it's just all in the edges so keep it there so that's that's the first edge I'll just let this go off uh, I'm not going to do too much if you look at the cab itself, <coughs> uh, let's go back to it. Let's go back to the uh, the diagram. If you look at the cab itself, the doors over here. So this left hand side of the seat, as we look at it, if we were sitting on it, this left hand side of the seat is going to take more uh, of the wear and tear. So try to keep that in focus for you. Try to get back. There we go. A little bit more just in there and we'll leave that for now and come back and do the next stage in a minute all right the next stage is the chair we've let it all dry um probably what we'll do in the end will i'll give it a uh, the infamous gunk wash but in the meantime what we're going to do is try and pick out some of these shadows in here um to do that we'll use a little bit of oil paint it's just bleeding out here on a piece of card um, we'll have some odorless thinners as well um, a flattish brush just for blending and obviously a brush for applying um, an old rag just for uh, sort of wiping excess uh, odorless thinners off um, what all we're going to do is just uh, pick out the highlights in the chair. Uh, sorry, the low lights. So yeah, what we're doing is the shadows. So just pick them out. No rush. No need to be accurate. Um, and if you, if you actually look, you can see down here the sort of um, 
formation of the cushions in the chair itself so that's what we're trying to pick up and then blend them into the colour of the chair keep it up then using our flat brush some thinners take the excess off on the on the cloth and then just just drag and blend You keep repeating this until you get it right. You can always put more on. The thinners will just take it back off. Let's see in here underneath the headrest. We're just taking the excess off just to leave enough in the in the crevices to give it a bit of shadow and a bit of definition and that's about as simple as it is you can have you work away at it don't worry about it going across the um, the form that you've done earlier you can always take it off with a bit of thinners but even even in that short time we can see it's getting a bit of definition now we'll just keep working on that until it's done and then let it all dry off and we'll give it a good wash just to mat it all down all right i'll carry on with this and in the meantime i'll go back and have a look at some of the other paintwork on the rest of the cab the crew cab painting and detailing of such um you you saw uh, before how we um applied the undercoat uh, the primer coat and then went on for the base coats and things like that and painted it not much, not a lot else to do other than just following the color call out or painting it in your own desired um, colors and uh, paint types um, after I've colored it uh, I've gone and give it a coat of clear varnish uh, in my case I've just used pledge clear um, it's a it's a brilliant utilitarian type uh, varnish I don't want anything too fancy because all we're using it for is just to uh, seat the, um, the the decals down um, and that's what we're going to look at because you can see on this piece here which is the uh, bulkhead next to the driver sits in there like that you can see that uh, some of these decals if we get the light right and the you know, pointy pointy stick you can see that some of the decals are really tiny um, and there's a, a technique for applying those uh, it makes things a little bit easier I'm sure that most of you like me will uh, be floating your um, your decals in a bath of water and sure yeah that's still what I do uh, particularly for some of the larger decals or some of the larger ones that um, this technique doesn't really work as well um, but uh, I think this way is a little bit easier um, and a little bit sort of less fuss and saves you chasing them around in the bath of water as they float off and escape. Now what you're going to need is uh, two pots, uh, a pot of microset and a pot of microsol. And you can see that I've numbered this one number two because this one goes on second. Um, what we're going to use first is the microset we don't really need this one for this uh, model because we don't really have them have the the de excuse me have the decal to uh, conform to shapes and things like that well not at the moment anyway so we'll just leave that one to one side so we'll get the the decal and uh, as you can see it's tiny 
that's how big it is and that is going to sit on here like that on there now I've, I've left it on this little uh, clip just to make things a little bit easier hopefully we can do it so that we can I'll try and position this so we can see what's going on and then try and get it in without making a mess of it right what we're going to do right we take a brush find the right brush I can never find things I've just got it I've got it on the desk I can't find it where's it gone oh there it is right brush now then these bottles are prone to being knocked over you can buy little stands to put them in things like that uh, I haven't got one yet uh, right what we need to do is take the decal and pure and simple just apply micro set to the back of it that's all the secret is oh, try not to drop it you can apply it to the front as well and just let it soak and eventually the decal will release and float off and be able to be fixed in place uh, what I do with this as well I often just put the piece on the surface where the uh, decal is going to go and that just gives you a little bit more time just to position it now then I've got that the wrong way around so let's turn it around and then with the aid of another pair of players we've just got to wait now until it releases just gently touching it to start to go you can see it down here let's so say this this technique not mine I learned it from somebody else in fact I learned it from Tony uh, Tony Oliver at Heligan 35 and he'd said he'd found it from somewhere so there we go just a bit of repositioning try not to mess with them too much try and get them in the general position and it's just a matter of putting them into place and then a final rub over and a smooth out with a q-tip or a cotton bud depending on where you're from this has got a little bit of a kink in it Yeah. There we go. That's it. That's that's the secret to applying small decals. Yes, you can still use the the wet bath um, system if you want to do that. But as I say, to save you sort of chasing them around the bath with uh, a pair of tweezers and they all falling up, everything like that, I do find this is. Um, a lot easier now then there's another tiny one uh, just to go in here because I'm there somewhere like that so right I'll go get that done get it all together and we can look at uh, doing some washes and things in the cab all right right there we are um, decals are all done and the um, first part of the crew cab is assembled um, what I've done uh, I've then protected the, the decals with a, as I say some uh, clear varnish um, just ready for some weathering inside um, apart from the decals on here there is a few of them to do as I say they, were, they, are, they are quite small um, so just take your time with them um, I've also done the uh, windows as well uh, the decals uh, are a little bit bigger you saw them before on the um, 
Nicole Sheep. Now these are a little bit fiddly. You really do need to take your time to do them um, because they are sort of um, open in the middle. There is a little bit of carry film around the outside. I don't know if you can quite see on this. Um, there's a little bit of decal fil carry film around the outside, which I think sort of detracts from the quality of the decal, really. Now, whether it's going to be um, sort of visible in the finished um, model, I don't know. Can you quite see if I can catch the light? See it just in there? Yeah. Yeah, I've also seen on the web, uh, on the tubes, um, somebody who's um, used uh, food colouring to, to give a little bit of a tint to the windows as well. You can do that if you want. I had considered it, uh, but I decided not to in the end because um, like uh, seeing the actual real thing, um, they don't seem to have window tints. Uh, on the on the actual uh, vehicle itself this one um, this decal is actually applied to the outside of the window why it's done that way I don't know but obviously there's going to be a window uh, windscreen wiper to go in there and such so what we're going to do now um, before we put it all together is do a little bit of weathering on the inside of this crew cab now what I'm going to use for this as well as um, some maybe I'll use some uh, Starship Filth. I'm using some uh, an enamel wash. This is from the um, Civil Vehicles pack from MIG. Uh, it's uh, this is actually the US model vehicles. Now normally I would put some uh, latex gloves on, but I haven't got any. My fingers are a little bit cleaner than they were right at the start, but. Um, I've finished the workshop now so uh, I can start and clean things up. So what we're going to do with this, um, use a, a fairly large brush, if I can keep hold of it, use a fairly large brush to put it on and then some tissue and some cotton buds to uh, help us wipe it off. And the first stage is give this a really good shake. Uh, if it's been lying around for a bit it's going to all settle in the bottom so you do need to give it a good shake, uh, which which we've already done. Now, we'll try not to make too much mess out of this. And fill the brush. Try not to knock the bottle over. We'll just put it out shot so it doesn't get knocked over. And then you could try it first, try it on the underneath, just to get the idea of where it's going to go. Because what this does, it's uh, like pigments in um, a, an enamel carrier uh, so what it's going to do is going to deposit pigments and then the the carrier is going to uh, flash off and dry off and leave it like a, a dusty effect so what we can do uh, we can give the whole thing uh, a bit of a going over I'll try and get it into what it will do as well the the thicker sections will settle into all the crevices and give it that sort of dirt, dirty look. Give it a run all over. Sort of trying to keep uh, in the a little bit heavier in some of the recesses. That's quite a good colour. You can make your own. Um, I've also got some pigments, uh, I've got some uh, concrete pigments and some wood uh, which I may have a little go at, I might splash some of that around, I might slap it on, uh, some of that around, but your uh, clear coat protection will protect the paint, see how it's already giving it that look, but we're not going to keep it like that because we'll just give it a few minutes then we'll we'll wipe some of it off especially around some of these ridges around the uh, control levers it's a big good way of just letting everything flow in and give it some 3d effect it really makes the detail pop 
uh, this time. So, right, we'll just let that flash off a little bit and then we'll come back and we'll clean it all up. Okay. And as you come back, uh, the carrier has sort of evaporated, just leaving the um, the pigments really. So it's now a matter of just cleaning it up and leaving all the deposits in the recess and the filter, the, the wash itself just leaves a grimy type look to the surface itself. It's up to you how much you put on, how much you want to leave, how much you want to take off and have a look, try and think of the areas where the dust will lie, where it would get rubbed off because you, you, you would think that um, somebody sitting in the seat the dust's going to rub off around the central sort of areas and like that but we'll leave it on the sides and see how the see how the the the, the ripped type worn type edges are now sort of all blending in just moving it around Now as this is going to be enclosed, I'm not going to bother giving it a dull coat to, to keep it all on because it's not going to be handled, it's not going to be moved about. Uh, it's not going to be uh, worn off with handling so we'll just leave it. Normally yeah, if you're doing this on the outside of your vehicle or, or your, your model, uh, yeah you could dull coat it, that will protect your work. So there we are. If you've got some little crevices do you want to get in, just a, a small rough brush to uh, get in. Right now, what I've got here, I've got some ammo. Um, sorry, I've some big pigments. This is the uh, concrete. I thought uh, suitable. I've got some in the in the drawer, so why not use it? Oh, easy to apply, just slap it on. Once again, the, just rub it into the corners. You don't need to take too much to uh, get a good effect then what you could do just take some pigment fixer uh, I also find that um, some uh, enamel thinners as well works like works good with this just take some pigment fixer and then just drop it on And what this will do, it'll fix, as, as the name suggests, it'll fix the pigments. And while it's still wet, you can also apply some more. And the pigment fixer will make it stick such if you can see just in the bottom here how it gets a, a little bit more lumpy sort of give some texture to it it is a bit messy Just in there, 
or I can blow it off. <laughs> there we go. Just a, another drop, just a, another drop pigment fixer just to fix it in. So how it's uh, running down here, we just lift that back up and there we go, we can see how the oil, the, uh, the the enamel wash has sort of stuck itself in the in the crevices of the seat, uh, and all, along with the um, pigments, that have all been stuck in the corners. And for about what? What's that? What, uh, less than a minute or two's work, and we're already looking pretty good in there. So what we're going to do now? I've got all the bits for the um, the digger cab, the crew cab. Um, we can have we can I can go back go in out and put them all together for you and then we'll come back and we should hopefully see the uh, the cab uh, in its finished condition we're not going to bother about uh, weathering the outside of the, the cab just at the moment but this will be uh, the first section done that's right let's go and get the rest of that done and we'll come back and see it just uh, uh, on the wind on the wind up Uh, and that is the cab built. Um, I'm not over enamoured with it, uh, especially these decals around the windows. Um, I'm still not happy with those. Um, well, I suppose we could probably hide them with um, a little bit of weathering and things like that. I've still got the um, windscreen wipers to go on and I think there's a little radio aerial to go on the back that's missing just yet. So I've got to um, cut them off the sprues, fire them, cut them off the sprues and, and glue them on. Um, the, the glass went in, the, the whole thing went together really easily. There's nothing much to comment on uh, about that. Uh, the the windows the windows went in using some of uh, deluxe uh, materials from e models uh, glue and glaze I've not used it before but uh, as you can see it does seem to have put the windows in without uh, any fogging um, it's a it's a white uh, bonding type glue probably similar to PVA something like that but uh, it does seem to work as well. Uh, and it will glue most plastics without uh, without a fucking but um, that's about all uh, there is for this section that's a crew cab built um, so uh, the next thing we'll move on to do the digger arm and some of the body work um, we'll try and do it in a, a few stages and a few videos uh, because we've got uh, other other builds coming up to be, to do as well um, but yeah, I think once we get a little bit of weathering on the outside of it, it'll uh, tone it down a little bit and make it a little bit more, um, yeah, Yo, you know what I mean. Anyway, that's it. Digger built. Well, the cab's built anyway. There it is. And we'll see you for the next video. Coming up soon, I hope. Bye.